On the eve of a crucial summit of EU leaders this week, a top British delegation is meeting European Commission counterparts in Brussels for dinner on Monday. Downing Street suggests their meeting is nothing out of the ordinary. The cast list and timing suggest otherwise. Theresa May the hope among business leaders is that the Prime Minister is playing a game of bluff. By talking up the prospect of walking away with no deal, May is seen as playing the only card she has left cut me some slack or we all lose. The trouble is that her dinner party hosts in Brussels are not the only ones who need convincing. As well as watching her back in London, May has also been negotiating by phone with Berlin and Paris to convince other national leaders that she really has no alternative. Until they give the nod, there is no room for anyone to climb down from the ledge. Jean-Claude Juncker There may be a surprising amount of sympathy for the British predicament from the Commission president and his team. Unlike their last Chile meeting in London, the Brits are no longer pretending there is not a problem. Officials in Brussels would also like to cut a deal so they can prove it is the Commission, not member states, that really calls the shots. Whether Juncker has the temperament to act as a go-between is another matter. His last few public utterances, now they have to pay, suggest it will all come down to money. David Davis the Brexit secretary arrives in Brussels with a mixed agenda. On the one hand, his failure to make progress during regular negotiating sessions is the reason his boss has had to step in over his head. He will be looking for political cover to end what has been a thankless deadlock. Yet Davis also represents the Brexit wing of a Tory party that will be first to pounce on May if she gives away too much in pursuit of progress. The pound rose on Monday as expectations grew that the PM will offer more money to unlock talks, but she'll need to keep one eye on her ambitious Brexit secretary if she does. Michel Barnier the EU chief negotiator has also been striking an increasingly chilly pose in public but, like his boss in the commission, he has a personal incentive to make the process work, not least a rumoured ambition to one day step into the top Brussels job. So far, a narrow negotiating remit has given him something to hide behind when the Brits attempt to play hardball. After weeks of fruitless talking, it must now be tempting to at least try to discuss a trade and transition deal alongside the tedious process of opening the British checkbook. Oliver Robbins Whitehall's top Brexit civil servant joins May and Davis as a symbol of the tussle between them, recently moving from the department for exiting the EU back to the cabinet office. Though he works directly for the PM, Robbins also brings the perspective of Whitehall and the Treasury into the room. Like many civil servants, he is thought to be alarmed at the extent to which the talks process has become politicized. His job is to present any climb down as a more routine diplomatic maneuver. Martin Selmer arguably, the most powerful man in the room is the one with the least impressive job title. As Junker's chief of staff, this German lawyer is technically an official with a firm grip on the detail. In practice, he is seen as wielding significant political power not just in Brussels but also as a trusted intermediary with Berlin. Rumored to be the source of unflattering leaks in the German press from the last time this cast of characters met for dinner in London, the beast of Berlaymont may be on his best behavior this time, but Selmer will be the one to work on if the Brits have any hope of persuading Angela Merkel to unlock the process.